Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss section 351, specifically transfer of services. What is the big picture? What's the big idea here? Well, under section 351, we have shareholders, individuals that formed a corporation and what they contributed is money, cash or property. And in return, the corporation issued stocks. They became owner in this corporation. Now, if this transfer of property specifically was considered Section 351, we don't have a taxable event. Simply put, you contributed property. In return, you got stocks of this company, the company that they formed, the shareholders. And right after the contribution, these shareholders control the company. And, and as a result, Section 351 kicks in. And as a result, it's not a taxable transaction. That's fine. This is what we learned so far about Section 351. What happens now if some of the shareholder contributed services? What does that mean? Let's take this individual here in this group. And this individual don't have any money and don't have any property to contribute it. But this individual, let's assume a young CPA, motivated, competent, and they ask him to join, but he does not have money. So what they told this individual, the CPA, if you spend with our company one year, we'll give you 10% of stocks. So if you work for the company for one year, we don't want you to contribute any money. We want you to contribute your services. What happened under those circumstances? Well, this is a form of bartering. I'm giving you my time. You're giving me something in return. Well, any form of bartering is taxable. So when you provide a service, it's a form of bartering. And what's bartering? Bartering is when you exchange something for something else, but we're not using cash. For example, these two individuals are bartering. So it's a form of bartering. Therefore, the service to this individual, the value of the service is taxable. So what we need to know is what happens when you provide services and property at the same time. So what, what about if this individual, they said, yes, I will work for the company, but I do have some property, some money, some land, some inventory I would like to contribute. What happened under those circumstances? Would the transaction qualify under Section 351 or not? This is what we would learn in this session. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So let's go ahead and get started. So the rules for transferring of services under Section 351, it depends whether you are only transferring services. Under those circumstances, the contribution is not counted under, under Section 351. Simply put, it's not counted toward the 80% control requirement. Because to have Section 351, you have to have control after the transfer. Well, if you only contributed services, that percentages of the service does not count toward 80% control. How about if you transfer both property and services? You'd say, okay, here's my computer. Now I'm, I'm transferring property. Will my contribution now be, be counted toward the 80%? Well, the shareholder contribution will count toward the 80% if, so it's, you don't just contribute anything, just any property. Well, if the fair market value of the property that you contributed is greater or equal to 10% of the fair market value of the service. So the value of the property has to exceed a certain amount for the contribution to be counted toward the 80% control. Now, what is, that, what is that amount? Well, it has to be fair market value greater or equal to 10% of the fair market value of the service. Well, the best way to illustrate this concept is to work few examples. Let's take a look at few illustration to understand this concept. We have A, individual A contributed property 
and received 60% of the stock, right now owns 60% of the company. B, contributed services, received 40% of the company stock and own 40%. So A owns 60, B owns 40 after this transfer. Would section 351 applies under this scenario? Well, remember that B transfer only service. What did we learn about only service? If B transfer only service, this contribution don't count toward the 80%. Well, if that's the case, we're looking at A and B owning only 60% after the transaction. Well, if they own 60% of the, tran the transaction, there's no section 351. Therefore, A will have to compute and recognize any taxes on the transfer of property, and obviously B will have to pay taxes on the service provided, on the fair market value of the service provided. Let's take a look at another trans transaction. A contributed $60,000 worth of property, owned 60% of the stock, and received 60% and owned 60% of the company. B contributed $1,000 in property, $39,000 in service, stock received 40%, owns 40%. So after this transfer, A control 60, B control 40. Well, B here transfer both property and service. Does B contribution counted toward the 80%? Well, let's find out. B contributed 39,000 in service. We have to multiply what's 10% of that. That's 3,900. When it comes to the property, the property contributed is less than 10% of the fair market value of service provided. Well, as a result, B's contribution is not counted toward the 40%. Therefore, we're back to square one. A and B together own only 60% of the stock after this transaction. Therefore, section 351 does not apply. Now, remember, B will have to pay taxes also on the service provided and the tax on the transfer of property is also applicable if there's a gain they have to pay gain on the property transferred let's take a look at another transaction a contributed sixty thousand dollar of property received sixty percent of stocks owned sixty percent of the company b contributed ten thousand dollar of property thirty thousand dollar in service stock received forty percent and owned forty percent so after this transfer a owns sixty B owns 40. Well, A transferred property, B transferred both services and property. Services is 30,000. Well, let's multiply this by 10%. The 10% the of the fair market value of services is 3,000. We see that the property is greater than 3,000, which is the 10% of the property. What does that mean? It means B contribution is counted toward the 80%. Well, if B contribution is counted, together they own 100%, section 351 will apply, and as a result, A and B don't pay any taxes on property transferred, however, B will have to pay taxes on the services provided, which is worth of $30,000, and that's considered ordinary income. Let's take a look at another transaction. A contributed $80,000 of property, received 80% of stocks, owned currently 80% of the company after the transfer. B contributed $1,000 of property, $20,000 of service, received 20%, and after this transfer owned 20%. So after this transfer is done, A owns 80% of the company, B owns 20. Would this transaction cl classify under section 351? Well, a transferred property, B both property and service. Let's take a look at the service. 19,000 times 10%, that's 1,900. Well, 1,000 is less than 10% of the service of the property. Therefore, B is not counted. Well, it doesn't matter whether B counted or not. After this transfer, together they made this transfer. A controls 80% of the, of the company. Well, they have control. Well, as a result, it does not really matter. Although B contribution is not counted, that's fine. A owns 80%, therefore section 351 would apply. Therefore, A and B don't pay taxes and any gains for the property transferred. However, B would still have to pay the taxes on the 19,000 of the service. That's totally a different thing, the 19,000. But for the property, they don't have to pay 
any taxes. Now, whether you are a CPA candidate, enrolled agent, or an accounting student, I suggest you go to Farhat Lectures and work MCQs, true, false, look at additional exercises that's going to help you understand Section 351. We're not done with Section 351. We still have to look at when boot is involved. We still have to look at when debt is transferred with the property. But it's very important to build your knowledge in Section 351 step by step. Good luck, study hard, and the next session we would look at Section 351, boot received, Section 351, liabilities assumed. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.